All right, hello everybody. We are in the home stretch this session and there's one more slot after this, so thanks for sticking in there and coming to the presentation. Uh, I hope it's useful. And uh, before I get started, uh, introduce myself and I have a few questions for you. So my name's Kyle Gupton. I'm a director of product management at Tableau in our development team. I work with our customers in a few of, of what we call our vertical markets, so public sector, healthcare, financial services. Spend a lot of time with our public sector customers, hence I get involved in accessibility things quite a bit since that's the uh, largest concentration of our customers who are interested in that, though it's not exclusive to that. We have a growing number of customers uh, who in financial services in particular, as well as higher education who are also interested uh, in accessibility. Um, so question for you is, how many of you were here last year for this presentation? Awesome, that's great. Actually, I don't know. Maybe people didn't want to come back. I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, I've been doing this presentation. This is like the third TC I've done this presentation, and I did a bunch of updates to it this year. Um, used some new case studies and some demos and, and such uh, so to keep it fresh for people who are returnees. All right. Uh, there are a couple of other sessions. Obviously, um, you do not have the opportunity to go from them because they're either now or yesterday, um, but things that are actually useful, they don't talk about accessibility, but they do talk about some of the same, uh, or some ideas that are useful when designing dashboards and making sure that you have your user in mind and design from the beginning uh, with the particular class of users that you have in mind, which is super important when you're creating accessible content, as I'll get into later. So today, we're gonna start from the beginning I'm gonna start with just the basics of accessibility. I don't assume that people know uh, much about the subject. Um, many of our customers don't when they start working with it. It's a requirement that they have to deal with um, and end up having to learn a lot about accessibility. And so I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna get into an explanation of the specific web accessibility standards which are most relevant in this space. And then I'm gonna talk about how to apply those standards in terms of best practices that you can use in Tableau and then show a case study of taking an existing dashboard, apply those best practices to it to make it more accessible. And then if we have time, I'm gonna do a demo of using that dashboard with a keyboard and screen reader on my computer. Um, I have quite a bit of content, and if there's many questions, um, I may not be able to get to the demo, but we do have some videos of me using a different dashboard with the screen reader that are available um, on our website. So I can, I can point you to how to get to those if we're not able to make it to the demo. All right, so the basics. So what is accessibility? It is the usability of a system by people with disabilities. And there are a lot of different types of disabilities that we're talking about. They could be vision impairments, deafness, hearing loss, uh, cognitive limitations, limited movement, all of those sorts of things are the types of disabilities that we think about when we talk about accessibility. And in order for a system to be accessible, each of these disabilities requires a different type of accommodation within that system to make it more accessible to someone with that disability. And of course, within each class of disability, there's a range of impairments, you know, from you know, a very minor uh, impairment to a much more severe impairment. And depending on the level of impairment, the accommodation in the system may change as well. And we're gonna see that in particularly uh, regarding visual disabilities, because we're gonna go into a lot of detail about that since it's super relevant. Now, when we talk about a computing systems, um, we talk about assistive technology, or AT, and this is technology and mechanisms that make computer systems more accessible. So to give you an idea of what some of these devices are, um, for this one, we have some assistive technologies uh, to deal, to help people with limited movement. So on the left is a picture of what's called a keyless keyboard. Uh, this is designed to help someone who has some motor control, but not fine grain motor control, still manipulate a computer through its keyboard interface through the use of two large switches. On the right, the gentleman is using what's called a sip and puff switch, which allows him to manipulate the keyboard by either sipping or puffing on the tube that's in his mouth. You might be most familiar with those in terms of wheelchair control, because that's quite common, but you can also get them that have interfaces to the computer for manipulating an on-screen keyboard. For vision impairments, there are a couple of out there that are most common. On the left is a refreshable braille display, it's a device that hooks to the computer and basically has a series of 
pins at the bottom that can change in order to create different braille characters based on the text that's shown on the screen. More commonly, um, users with vision impairments who need them use what's called screen reader software. And so this is software that runs on your computer and it reads in a computer generated voice the text that's on the screen. Um, there are three of them that are most common out there. Uh, JAWS for Windows is probably the, the big boy in this space and probably the most common one that you're going to encounter. Second one is Freeware and it's NVDA. Um, it's like non-visual desktop access, I believe is what that stands for. And that's a freeware open source project that's out there. And that runs on Windows as well. And then the Macintosh has built-in screen reading software called VoiceOver. Uh, and so these are the ones that are most commonly used out there in the market. And so if we get to the demo, I do use a Mac, and so I'll be demoing the VoiceOver screen reader uh, with that. So let's get into the vision impairments because Tableau is a visual product and therefore we need to know, understand about vision impairments and how you can help people um, to still perceive um, your visuals uh, when they might have a vision impairment. So the impairments exist on a wide scale. You know, a lot of times, uh, I know when I talk internally to people at Tableau, the first thing they ask is, how is a blind person supposed to use a visualization? And it's like, well, that's a good question. It's hard. Um, there are ways to do it, but there are a lot of other visual disabilities besides being, you know, totally blind or being unable to perceive light. And some of these are really common. So red-green color blindness is a great example of that. It affects about 8.5% of males and about half a percent of females. And so, you know, roughly 5% of the population is red-green colorblind, very common. Um, and so that's very common. There are other types of color blindness, like inability to perceive color, um, that are much less common, but they do exist. And so to give you a sense of what some of these, uh, the impact of these disabilities or vision disabilities can be on seeing a visualization, I put together some simulations uh, using some cool filters uh, for the Chrome browser uh, that can simulate uh, what these conditions uh, might look like. So this example here, we're gonna return to this later as the basis for our case study. Um, this is a, a real world customer dashboard from the National Health Service in the Great Britain. Uh, it was featured in the book, The Big Book of Dashboards, which is a really cool book if you don't have it, um, as an example of a dashboard in the healthcare space. So it basically tracks patient admission, admissions to a series of hospitals in the NHS. And this is the, the dashboard that was being used and was published as is. And later we're gonna make it more accessible than it is because it has a lot of trouble. So my first simulation is what things look like uh, with a red-green color blindness. So this is a simulation of red-green color blindness. And if you're not red-green color blind, you'll see that there are some changes in the colors of the marks that start making it difficult to distinguish the marks from each other. The colors look kind of wonky, definitely not what the designer originally intended. Next, we have a simulation of no color vision, where the world is in shades of gray, like a black and white TV. In this case, you can see that it's nearly impossible to tell apart some of the marks from each other uh, in this timeline. These are timelines of events is what they are. So as you go from left to right, each row is a patient. As you go from left to right, it's time, and these are events within the National Health Service, like came for an appointment, was admitted to a hospital, discharged from the hospital, et cetera. That's what, this, what these visualizations are. Next is the simulation of contrast sensitivity loss. This is actually quite common, and really anyone who has a, you know, a refractory error in their vision has some amount of contrast sensitivity loss, and it typically also uh, becomes worse as people age. And with this, it becomes more difficult to distinguish foreground and background colors from each other. So text on a background um, can become more difficult to read for someone with a contrast sensitivity loss. Next is an example of low vision, where even with uh, lenses or corrective surgery, this may be the best visual acuity someone can get. So they can still see the dashboard, but it's very, very, very blurry and can't be sharpened up. And then finally, we have the complete inability to see light at all, where someone is unable to perceive the dashboard completely. 
So we can see that there is a huge variety of disabilities and you know, vision impairments that we can think about. And there are different techniques that help people um, still perceive things when they have these disabilities. And that's a lot of what we're gonna talk about in the best practices. Now, of course, this is challenging because you know, our company's mission statement is to help people to see and understand data. It is a visual product, and in fact, the whole kind of genesis of Tableau as a product was leveraging our most powerful sense, it takes up a huge portion of the processing power of our brain, which is our vision center, and it's leveraging that power to enable us to understand and pull insights out of data that you wouldn't be able to get by just looking at tables of data. That's kind of the whole reason for being for Tableau. So, you know, what can we do? What's our goal here? So really, what the goal of creating more accessible dashboards in Tableau is, is to allow more people who have these visual disabilities still be able to benefit from the power of Tableau. So even if you have you know, color blindness or no color vision or a contrast sensitivity loss, you can still benefit from the visual nature of Tableau if the dashboards and vizs are designed correctly. And then for someone who's unable to see the dashboard, we can at least still give people access to all of the data that's underlying the visualization. So that's really what our goals here are, to expand the scope of, or expand the number of people who can benefit from the power of Tableau, but at least give access to the data um, to everyone. Okay, so that aside, um, there are a number of laws and regulations in this space, and it's actually growing. I had to add a few more from last year. Um, probably the biggest one, uh, if you're in the United States, that's most uh, talked about is Section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973. That's the U.S. federal law that uh, has requirements for the accessibility of electronic and information technology that is purchased and deployed within the federal government. And it flows down to some state and local agencies as well. How many of you in here are, are working kind of under Section 508? Yeah, uh, probably about half-ish. So, great. The next is the Americans with Disabilities Act, which is a, in a fairly unique situation right now. Uh, there actually was a, has been some court cases about this lately that have made the news. So the ADA is from 1990, I believe, um, and it doesn't say anything about websites or software or anything like that. It mostly addresses you know, physical spaces, wheelchair ramps, buildings, all of those sorts of things. And there have been a number of lawsuits over the years uh, basically saying um, you know, a public website is considered a public accommodation, which is what the ADA talks about, um, under the ADA and must be made accessible. And there's been a mixed legal record on how the district and um, appeals courts in the US have responded to that. So most recently, there was a case uh, where a gentleman in California sued Domino's Pizza because their website and their mobile application was not accessible um, to a blind individual. And originally, the US District Court threw that case out and said, nope, the ADA does not uh, apply to a website or a mobile app. The appeals court came in and overturned that and said that, well, because Domino's has a physical location and that physical location is covered under the ADA, the website and the mobile app is an extension of that, and therefore it's also covered under the ADA. That, of course, got appealed by Domino's to the U.S. Supreme Court, and the U.S. Supreme Court refused to hear the case, which means they let the, the appeals court case stand. So this is interesting. Um, I have mixed opinions on this subject. Um, mainly, my, my concern with how it went down is the ADA does not have any standards for what it means for a website or a mobile app to be accessible. And that means it's gonna be fought out in the court system, which is not an awesome way to go about doing something like this because there are good standards out there. So in my opinion, the law needs to be changed to you know, actually say what it means to be accessible. So it, but it's, a, it's an interesting situation going on right now. And we do have some customers who are coming to us not talking about Section 508, but talking about the ADA. So outside of the US, there are a number of other accessibility laws. The Equality Act of 2010 in the UK has some provisions that are very similar to the ADA, as well as a bunch of other stuff. Um, and there are two new laws that were just passed 
uh, and that were just went into effect in the last year since I did this presentation last year, and that's the Accessible Canada Act and the European Accessibility Act. And these are similar to the ADA as well, except they're modern, and therefore they do talk about websites and, and computers and such. Okay, so why might you care about accessibility when you're designing and deploying your Tableau dashboards? Well, there are uh, lots of good reasons. You know, probably the best is that you care about helping people with disabilities more fully engage in the world. Also, maybe you wanna make sure that you're able to reach the largest possible audience for the content that you're creating. One that people often don't think about is that many accessibility practices are good usability practices. There's two great examples here. Uh, one is the one that's always used, which is a wheelchair ramp. You know, wheelchair ramps are designed to allow people using wheelchairs or walkers or who otherwise have difficulty navigating stairs to be able to access a building. But they're useful if you're pushing a baby stroller or pulling luggage or pushing a cart with something on that. Lots of people can benefit from wheelchair ramps. I, the second example is one just that happened in my own life and I thought it was kind of funny. So my wife and I are big horror movie fans. And there's a movie that came out a couple years ago called The Witch, which is really good if you like horror movies. But in The Witch is set in like 1600s era New England and it's really hard to understand the people in the movie um, because they're speaking in kind of a old dialect with an accent and it's you know, kind of quiet. And we're like, I'm not really sure what's going on with the movie. Turn on closed captioning. Ah, it allowed us to actually enjoy the movie, which is great, again, um, but through using a, a technology that was made to help people uh, with deafness or hearing loss be able to uh, watch TV or movies. Also, so another reason you might care about accessibility is that your organization may have its own requirements. That's mainly what we're seeing in the financial services industry, uh, particularly a lot of banks are starting to adopt uh, their own requirements. You know, banking is one of those things that um, it behooves uh, the companies to make accessible because everyone needs to bank. Um, you know, doesn't matter whether you have a disability or not, you need to bank. Uh, and those standards are starting to come into even internal facing um, dashboards and, and such, not just stuff that's facing to the customer. And then finally, depending on where you are, it might be the law for you to make something accessible. You know, that's true if you're in the US federal government uh, and publishing dashboards out there for wide distribution. Okay, so now that's the basics. So we know kind of what accessibility is, um, what some of the common issues are. We've explored some of the visual disabilities in a little more depth uh, and talked about the legal framework. So now let's talk about web accessibility standards. And the reason why I'm focusing on web is that all of our accessibility work has been focused on our sharing platforms. So this is Tableau server, online, and public. So when you're accessing your visualizations using a web browser. So there are a set of common accessibility standards called the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, or WCAG. That's how you pronounce W-C-A-G. This was developed by a group called the World Wide Web Consortium which is a standards body that maintains technical standards like HTML, CSS, those sorts of things. And it is a, it's really two things. Uh, one, it's a set of recommendations for making web content more accessible. So how to properly code uh, your web content, how to properly design visually the content. And then it also establishes technical standards which allow assistive technologies to interoperate correctly with that web content. So basically the way tools like screen readers work with web pages is that they understand the code behind the web page. They understand the particular markup that's used in the code to define you know, headers and text blocks and, and such and such. Um, and basically in order to make a website that works correctly with those assistive technologies, it needs to be properly coded underneath. And the WCAG establishes those guidelines. So the WCAG's been around for a while, um, but Section 508 in the US federal government didn't use it until January of 2018. Uh, Section 508 had its own accessibility guidelines for web-based content that were actually fairly antiquated because they predated the interactive web. It was really, theirs were designed mostly when web sites were just static web pages. But starting in 2018, they adopted the standards of WCAG 2.0 
for their own standards, which was a really good move because the standards are way better, they're way more modern, they're way more robust, and they're way more specific. They give much more guidance to the developer on how to make a proper accessible web page. Now, the current version is actually 2.1. I don't know when the government is planning to update that, uh, update Section 508 to use the latest standards, um, but the current version of WCAG out there is 2.1. So the way the WCAG is organized is there are four high-level principles and associated guidelines for each of those principles. So the first principle is perceivable. And it basically says that the content in the UI needs to be perceivable to someone in a way that they can perceive it. So there needs to be alternate ways of presenting. It could be visual, or it could be audio, or it could be tactile. Uh, those are all ways that something can be perceivable to someone. Web content also needs to be operable, and it's kind of the same thing. So all of the navigation, the UI, needs to be operable by someone in a way that they can operate it. Typically, this kind of means you know, one big thing, which is keyboard navigation. So that's kind of a big fundamental thing in accessibility, is that everything should be able to work using the keyboard you shouldn't have to use the mouse in order to use a UI. Because there's two reasons. One is, lots of people have trouble using mice. You know, if you have a tremor or arthritis or something, you can have difficulty using a mouse. Also, all of those assistive devices, like the, the sip and puff switch and the, the keyless keyboard, those all look like keyboards to the computer. They work through the keyboard interface on the computer. And so by making something keyboard navigable, you've also made them work with those kinds of devices. The third principle is understandable. So understandable basically means that uh, the page needs to be well-structured, it needs to have good instructions, things need to be labeled correctly so that someone can easily understand how to operate it. And then finally, it need, the content needs to be robust. And this means it needs to be properly formed from a technical point of view so that it can interoperate correctly with the assistive technologies. This is where we get to the technical standards part of things. So the way the WCAG is, is organized is each guideline is assigned a level. Um, and there are three levels, A, AA, and AAA. A is the least stringent, AAA is the most stringent. AA is really what we're targeting. That is the standard that is used in Section 508. It's used in the Canada Accessible Canada Act, European Accessibility Act, and such. So WCAG AA standard is the, is the reference here. AAA isn't really used all that much, especially not widely on a website, because it does impose some pretty significant design constraints on the website. But AA is what we're really focused on. And what that means is, in order for a page to meet the AA standards, it has to meet all of the, the single A and the AA guidelines. They stack on top of each other. All right. So now what does that mean from the point of view of creating accessible dashboards? How does that look uh, when you turn it into Tableau terms? So there are a couple of kind of big ticket philosophies that you should have when starting out creating accessible content. And the first is that accessibility is a design choice. You need to design in accessibility up front and not try to retrofit it. Accessibility is a requirement just like any other requirement you might have for what you're designing. Um, it shouldn't be something that you think about after the fact. Like I said, you should bake it in, um, the understanding of that up front. And this is what gets to you know, the ideas in that other presentation I mentioned about you know, making sure you have a good understanding of your user base for your dashboards and making sure that you're designing for that particular uh, base of users. And if you're designing um, for people with disabilities, then you should design for people with disabilities. Because you know, roughly, you can't make any arbitrary dashboard accessible. You can't just take a dashboard and make it accessible and not really change it all that much. Sometimes you kind of design yourself into a corner and you might design something that just doesn't really work correctly um, from an accessible point of view. 
And we know that firsthand very you know, clearly at Tableau because we've been retrofitting a lot of our code for accessibility. And it's way harder to do it after the fact than it is to do it from the beginning. And when I go through the case study, I'm gonna talk about some of the, the challenges and decisions that I had to make about you know, what's the best way to do this? Because it's not necessarily obvious. Okay, next thing to know is there is a FAQ document, FAQ document out on the community forums that I maintain that is basically a clearinghouse for all things accessibility at Tableau. So on that page, you can find links to all of our VPAT documents, which are the documents where we document our level of accessibility, um, how to's, you know, articles of you know, common questions that people have asked and, and instructions for how to deal with certain situations. There are videos of me doing like an older version of this presentation, uh, as well as using, uh, doing a demo. Uh, and there are some other you know, interesting links, as well as links to all of the formal documentation we have on the subject. Um, and I do monitor that and answer questions on it pretty regularly, uh, so that's a great place to go. And I'd love to see more people asking questions and such, you know, kind of around that. Okay, so that aside, um, so what do you need to do when you want to create something that's more accessible in Tableau? Well, the first thing from a practical point of view is you want to make sure that you're only using elements in the dashboard that we have made accessible. There's really kind of two classes of work that goes on in making something accessible. One is stuff that we have to do. Like we have to enable certain features in our platform in order for them to be accessible. Like all the stuff that's on a dashboard, we have to make sure that it works correctly with the keyboard. That isn't something that you can do on your own. And then there's the stuff that you have to keep in mind about like color choices and those sorts of things uh, when you're designing the content. So to date, and this is the, the current uh, list as of Tableau 2019.4, which is the current version out there, and this is actually really true for the last six months or so as well. So the things that you can put in a dashboard um, that are accessible are workbook tabs, so you can show the tabs of a, of a workbook, uh, titles of dashboards, the views themselves in particular, or specifically the title of the view, the view data window of the view, and the caption for the view if it's visible on the dashboard. And, and by accessible, I mean it works correctly with the keyboard, screen reader works correctly with it, and so forth. Because the way you deal with views is, you know, if someone is unable to see the view, they open the view data window, and then they get the data underlying that view in a table that can be navigated using assistive technology and a keyboard. So two filter types so far, list and drop down list filters. Uh, categorical legends, and then a bunch of the objects that you can place on a dashboard. Text objects, web pages, images, and buttons. And then finally, the visualization toolbar itself. So this is the toolbar that shows up by default um, that has like the links to you know, share a viz and download an image of the viz or the data behind the viz. Um, all of that is accessible. And there's still a lot that we have to do. Um, you know, parameters, that's a big one. Uh, other filter types, We've got a lot to do, and we are, have plans, and we are working on this, and you know, looking to expand out the number of things that you can use in these dashboards that need to be more accessible. Got a whole presentations and specs and everything on that that I'm working on with the various members of the other development teams who do the actual work. So the next thing to do is, of course, you need to publish that dashboard because it needs to be on one of our sharing platforms, one of our web-based platforms. So either server, online, or public. And you can also, and this is a, a change, uh, as of Tableau 2019.4, um, it always used to be true that you needed to embed the dashboard in an accessible web page because the Tableau server or UI kind of UI that sits outside of the dashboard was not accessible. Well, we've resolved that in Tableau 2019.4, um, and I'll show that as part of the demo, which I hope I'll be able to get to. All right, so now these are the kind of the big ticket items. So now when you start looking at the things that you need to keep in mind in terms of your design, we'll look at the specific guidelines and groups of guidelines in the WCAG that are applicable. So you can think of this list as a distillation of the WCAG specifically for Tableau authors. 
So there's a lot of the WCAG that doesn't really matter to you as a Tableau author because it addresses things like, like audio and video and those sorts of things which are not typically found in Tableau dashboards. And there's really only five groups of guidelines that are relevant that you need to keep in mind when you're designing your dashboard. So let's talk about each of these and, and their best practices in Tableau. So the first one, and this is probably one of the most important ones, you know, this is pretty much the second most important one besides keyboard, is what's called a text alternative. And so the guideline here is that any non-text content on a web page needs to have a textual alternative that serves the same purpose. And this is so that it can be read by a screen reader or put into a braille display or something like that. So best practices for dealing with this are, there are a number. So first is, you know, users who need a textual alternative to a visualization use the view data window. And when you open that up, it's an HTML table of the data behind the viz and you can navigate it correctly with assistive technology. It's also good to add additional context in the form of captions on a visualization. You know, so captions are not enabled by default, but if you turn them on, they're a place where you can put a high level description of what's in the visualization, kind of what the point of it is. And we actually generate, auto-generate default captions which kind of describe, you know, what data is in the visualization, you know, what's on color, what's on size, all of those sorts of things. And those default captions for relatively simple visits can be actually really good. Um, but this, the caption can help give someone an understanding of what's the point of this visualization and do I want to open the view data window uh, at all. Third is for any image object that you have on the dashboard, you need to add alt text to it. And this is basically text that the screen reader will read um, to tell the user what this image is. And you can edit the alt text in Tableau in the same place that you edit the image, where you specify the file path of the image that you've put into the image object. And then if you have any button objects, there's tooltip text that you can assign, and that tooltip text is picked up by the screen reader um, so that someone will know what the purpose of that button is. And then there are a couple of interesting third-party options here um, that I do want to spend some time on. Uh, so the first is a, uh, they're both dashboard extensions. So dashboard extensions is, is, are pretty neat because though we didn't design them to help with accessibility, they actually do because a dashboard extension is just a web page. And anything that's in a dashboard extension is as accessible as that web page was designed to be. And you can navigate right on into it using your keyboard and the screen reader and it all works really nicely. And so there are a couple out there that are particularly useful. So one is something called the data tables extension and the second is a set of them around natural language generation. So with the data tables extension, so this is a extension made by a customer of ours over in the UK named Tuan Hong. Uh, he has a Tableau Magic website, which is actually a really cool website with lots of great Tableau tips and so forth. And he created this extension that basically what you do is you drop it into a dashboard, it brings up a dialogue and says, hey, which visualization do you want to display the data for? And you pick one of the views that are on that dashboard and then it displays the data in a table right there in the dashboard. What was neat about it is when he developed this, I don't think he was trying to do this, but he used a pretty accessible standard data table control from JavaScript in order to make this. And he got really far with the accessibility. Um, and so it's like, oh, this is great. You know, you don't have to open up the view data window. Um, you know, it, it has some really nice features to it. So then we took it and we, we have a consultant who we work with, a third party who does our testing for us, prepares our VPATs, and we hired them to fix the remaining accessibility issues and republish it out there. So this is available on the extensions gallery and it's actually a really great alternative to um, the view data experience because you know, it keeps someone from having to open up a separate window. It also adds some great um, capabilities like reordering of columns, um, the ability to edit the column names, uh, which our view data window doesn't have. Now, it is an extension, which means it does have some limitations. Things we know about uh, printing, exporting images, and such like that don't work with extensions, but that's, that is stuff that's on our roadmap to resolve. I'm gonna take a little drink of water here real quick. 
So the next group of extensions that's interesting are something called natural language generation. So there are some companies out there that are basically creating AI-based tools that can take data and a visualization and generate a textual narrative around that data. And they're able to you know, hit the high points and say, it's like, oh, well, you know, sales increased year over year by X percentage, you know, all based on what's in the visualization. And there are three of them out there that have integrations with Tableau in the form of dashboard extensions. And that's Automated Insights, NVIDIA, or sorry, NVIDIA, uh, Narrative Science, and ARIA. And they all have slightly different approaches um, to doing it, but I think it's a really interesting potential way, and depending on the complexity of the viz, they do a better or you know, not as good job of creating a textual narrative. It's a really hard problem to solve um, from a computer science point of view. But what's neat about this is that, you know, okay, I said that you know, if someone is unable to see the visualization, you wanna give them access to the data that's underlying it. But then they have access to a table of data, which, as we know, is not all that useful. It's the whole point of using a tool like Tableau. So what these tools do is attempt to extract the insights from the data and present them in text. And that text can be read by a screen reader uh, and navigated around uh, using the keyboard. So this is a really interesting alternative um, as a way to bring, I think, a better uh, or a higher level of data insights uh, to someone who needs to use assistive technology like that. Okay, so next guideline, um, adaptable. So this is like a, kind of hard to explain, uh, but basically the dashboard needs to be clear and explainable in terms of its structure, how the various elements relate to each other, how things are titled, et cetera. And so, you know, best practices here is to provide text in the dashboard that explains how the various components of the dashboard relate to each other, like, you know, what views do filters affect, things like that, so people can understand how the dashboard is put together. And then also make sure that the instructions don't include any references to sensory characteristics of the UI objects. So don't have instructions that say, click on the button in the top right of the dashboard, because someone who can't see the dashboard doesn't know what the top right is and they don't know it when they're navigating it with a screen reader. What they'll know is the name of the button. And so your instructions need to refer to things by their names, not by, you know, it's a red button or what have you. And then a common thing, and I'll show an example of this on the next slide, is to make sure when you're using legends, when you have legends, make sure that the, that the legends have titles so that someone can understand what chart they go with. So on the left-hand side here, we have a picture of a kind of a really common pattern in Tableau, is if you have a legend for a chart, you might just put the legend somewhere near the chart or even white space on the chart and have no title. And the user is assumed to understand that they know that that legend goes along with that chart. The problem is, if you're using this with a screen reader, these are two separate objects, and you wouldn't know what relationship they have to each other. So a good practice is to make sure that you title your legends appropriately. So in this case, the chart is called number of students by SAT score, it's an old SAT score demo, and so I called the legend, legend for number of students by SAT score. So if someone's navigating around, they'll understand that these two things go with each other. Okay, uh, this next one um, is a new guideline from WCAG 2.1 and it's around the orientation of the display, basically saying you can't have content that assumes that you're either always in vertical or always in landscape orientation for your device. Because sometimes someone may have a device, for example, a, a, actually the, the WCAG has lots of good examples of why this is a, 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 a guideline, is someone may have a tablet device that's fixed to a wheelchair and they can't rotate it. So any content they go to needs to work with the orientation that is fixed for them. And so, you know, a good way to handle this in Tableau is to add additional dashboard layouts for tablets and phones. So ones that work for both portrait and landscape orientation. Next one, and this is a, a, a great group of, of uh, topics, is around distinguishability. And this is where you really start to 
change up the way your visualizations look so that people with visual disabilities that are, can still see are able to get benefit from the, the visualization. So the first is the use of color. So the guideline here is that color should not be the only means by which to convey information. And now, of course, you do that all the time in Tableau. You color lines and, you know, with different categories and such. And so you need to have other ways to convey that same information. And so there are different ways of doing this. You know, judicious use of labels um, in, your, in your dashboard can be good. Uh, like if you have like a fill color or something on a map, you can just have a label there on the map that, you know, says, you know, what the value of that color gradient might be. Um, if you have a line chart, you can do a dual axis and overlay shapes on top of the lines uh, so that someone can tell the lines apart, not just by the color, but also by the shapes that are there. And there are some other things like in beginning and end caps to lines uh, that are particularly helpful here. And, you know, we do have a colorblind color palette that's designed for red-green colorblindness. Um, I think that's a good practice to use, but it's not sufficient because it's specific to red-green colorblindness. And that's not the only kind there is. There are other kinds of colorblindness. And so this guideline is meant to allow the content to work for anyone regardless of what kind of color vision issue they might have. Another uh, visual choice is around the contrast and the contrast of the foreground and background color of text. And so basically there needs to be enough of a difference between the foreground and background color that someone with a contrast sensitivity loss can still perceive it. Uh, there are tools out there, probably the most common one is called the Color Contrast Analyzer. Um, it's from the UK, so color with a U. Um, if you want to search on it, it's a great little tool. You just you use a little eyedropper and you can sample foreground and background and it'll tell you the contrast ratio and whether it meets the WCAG guidelines. So for example, you know, here on the left we have a pale gray yeah, you can see it. Uh, it says accessibility. That does not meet the contrast ratio. The text on the right does. Um, luckily, the default text color in Tableau meets the contrast guidelines. So if you just use the, the straight up default guideline or default color uh, with the Tableau font in uh, your dashboards, that meets the, the color contrast requirements. Okay. Um, another thing related to, this is a, this next one here, Reflow, is also new to WCAG 2.1. Um, and this is basically, the, the content needs to be presentable, um, you know, where you only have to scroll in one dimension. Um, so you shouldn't have to scroll left and right, uh, or up and down, left and right, but just up, up and down or left to right. And so basically the way to deal with this again is to create additional dashboard layouts um, for these, these dimensions. Uh, and that can help if someone hits the website you know, using a mobile device or something like that. And then there's non-text contrast. Um, so this is, again, this is another new addition to WCAG 2.1. And it's a bit of a challenging one uh, for a data visualization product. And it basically says that you know, it's not just text that you need to be able to see, but if there are visual elements that are important, i.e. they convey information or they are part of the user interface that you need to be able to see, there needs to be a certain contrast ratio there as well so someone can see it. Um, so since Tableau visualizations are conveying information, it means it applies to the marks in the Tableau visualization, which is challenging because sometimes you have overlapping marks. And you know, it's kind of impossible to have a color palette that works for you know, that color against the background plus e any color against any other color in that palette. Though we have ideas of drawing outlines or things like that in order to allow uh, marks to overlap correctly. Um, so right now, we don't have a great solution for this, um, but one of our enterprising customers at TD Bank in Toronto has created a set of colorblind color palettes um, that all meet these color contrast guidelines. And you can download them from our community forums. Um, it's uh, Catherine Suvalsides at TD Bank, and she's doing some amazing work there with like an accessibility merit badge for people who are doing data design. Some really cool stuff. How am I doing? Okay. Okay, next one, navigable. 
So a couple things here, um, focus order. So the dashboard needs to be arranged in a way that as you key around it, uh, the focus order goes in a reasonable logical path. And then also the headings and labels of items like filters, uh, views, et cetera, need to be logical and describe what their purpose is. So you need to set a sensible focus order for the dashboard zones, and then also title everything correctly. You know, don't leave titles off of things. Uh, make sure the titles are explanatory. But the focus thing is kind of weird. So we're not real good at that right now. So in Tableau today, the dashboard focus order is set conveniently by the order in which you put the objects in the dashboard, which is probably not all that helpful because you probably didn't build the dashboard in the order that you want someone to navigate it. So, the way you work around that right now is you can edit the XML that is actually what a Tableau workbook, a Tableau workbook is actually an XML file. And you can edit the XML to reassign the order of the zones. And I have an article um, on the forums that explains exactly how to do this and shows how to do this. And it works really well. I've tested it with upgrading, downgrading, making other changes, and it works really well. We are working on some new dashboard layout uh, tools in Tableau, and that is definitely one of the things that we're going to put in there is a proper UI for assigning the order of the key focus order of the dashboard. Okay, and the last one uh, is input assistance. Um, so this is basically, again, good labels and instructions for how to use the dashboard. Um, so, you know, good practices are to put text blocks there um, that describe, hey, this is what this dashboard is, this is what these filters are for, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and another one is we do have documentation that explains how to use all of our accessible controls with a keyboard. Because some Tableau filters are kind of complicated. You know, they're, they have some options that are not typical for like, you know, standard drop downs. And, you know, the, might need to know how to use them if you've never encountered a Tableau dashboard. So we do have documentation that it is itself accessible, so someone can navigate it with a screen reader um, that explains how to do this. And you can, and I'll show in the case study an example of this, you can put like an image object or something on the dashboard that has a link that opens up the web page so that someone can get to the instructions for the dashboard. And there's a, an article on the frequent asked questions list that explains how to do this, what URL to use, and so forth. All right, that is a lot. But it comes alive when you actually look at a case study and like, what does this mean in practice? Okay, so let's return to our National Health Service dashboard and let's look at what its issues are regarding accessibility. So the first big issue is that the marks are distinguishable only by color. So remember, things that convey information, and when color is important to that information, needs to be uh, conveyed in a way other than just color. Next is the contrast ratio for the text is too low. So I, I don't know, I'm not gonna rag on the dashboard, I don't know where this green came from, it's a terrible choice, and that green and white is not contrasty enough. In fact, it's hard, I, I'm having a hard time reading it just standing here, right here, looking at the slide on the computer. And I don't have much of a contrast sensitivity loss. So next is the views, and there's four views on this dashboard. They don't have titles. So this, uh, these things up here are just text blocks. Those actually aren't titles for the views. And so that means when someone navigates to the view, they don't know what the view is. It, the screen reader is unable to announce what that view is. Uh, there are two image objects. There is a, a logo up at the top right um, that doesn't have, and, and neither of them have alt text, and then there's an uh, image at the bottom right which is just a link to the Big Book of Dashboards webpage. Then there are no instructions on how to use this, and the views themselves don't have any captions. So if someone's coming to this and they can't see it, they have absolutely no idea what is being done, what this dashboard is about, like what, what is on this thing. And then finally, the keyboard focus order is confusing. So if you load up a web browser and start tabbing around, it jumps all in, in a weird order. Okay, so that is the starting dashboard. And so I took it and I did my best um, to turn it into a more accessible version of the same thing. 
And this is what I came up with. Um, so let's go through kind of everything that I did um, and why I made the choices I did. And you know, it's not exactly clear all the time uh, what to do. It's a lot of judgment here. And uh, I did what I did. <laughs> so the first thing is that I used uh, text colors that do meet the minimum contrast guidelines. I figured it needed to stay in the green theme, so I went to the NHS website, and they use green for part of their website, and so I just used that green color because I figure it's like NHS appropriate. So that seemed like a, a reasonable thing, and it happened to meet the contrast guidelines. So all of that text now does meet the, the proper contrast guidelines. The next thing I did is I showed the, view, the titles for all of the views and made sure that those titles are explanatory for what the views show. So things like, you know, events for patients emitted in the last day, admitted in the last day is the name of one of the views. And, you know, don't try to read the text. I've, hopefully you can see what I've outlined uh, in blue. Next thing I did is I set the alt text for these image objects. Uh, one thing that's interesting about that logo in the top right corner um, because it is a logo, the various contrast ratio stuff doesn't actually apply to it. Since it's an official logo, the, the WCAG contrast guidelines don't apply to its text. Ordinarily, it does. Um, ordinarily, an image of a text, an image of text should have the same contrast uh, ratio as non-image text, um, but not if it's a logo. There's a special clause in the WCAG about that. Okay, and you know, literally, the, the, the um, alt text is something like, you know, National Health System logo, or something like that. You know, it's, it just says, this is the logo for this thing, is what the, the alt text says. I also added an image object um, that looks like it's a little green question mark, kind of a little question mark help. That's a button, oh, sorry, that's an image with a link on it. And that opens up the web page that I talked about that explains how to use a Tableau dashboard uh, with a keyboard. I also put a big block of text um, on the dashboard that explains, hey, this is what this dashboard says, these are what the filters are, this is what the filters do, you know, you use this filter and that filter, and et cetera, et cetera, and explains how to open up the view data window and so forth as well. Now, another thing you might do um, if you, you know, really want to go all in on this, is you can take, um, instead of ha linking to our web page that shows how to use the, um, the keyboard navigation with the controls, you could have a custom web page for this dashboard that has instructions about the dashboard and it integrates it all together to explain to someone how to use that dashboard. We actually had our consultant try this out and it worked out pretty cool. Um, and you know, you're free to copy our documentation page and put it into another web page or something like that if you want to make a custom web page um, for a dashboard. It's a lot of work, I know, and you have to have a web server that can serve it up, but you know, it might be a good choice. I also added descriptive captions to the views. One of the things that we want to do is make it so that you don't actually have to show the captions in order for the screen reader to pick them up. Right now, um, unless the captions are visible, the screen reader doesn't get them um, because the text actually isn't in the web page. Um, but the descriptive captions are useful. So basically what happens when someone navigates to it with the screen reader, um, it'll read the title, say that it's an image, and then read the caption. And I think I'm gonna have time to show that off. I made sure to use um, all of the accessible filters that we have. And then there are a bunch of extra filter options that are on by default that allow you to there are these little glyphs that show up when you hover over the filters that allow you to do things like, you know, show all of the values in the database or even change the filter type. They're confusing and they're strange for someone who's never interacted with Tableau before. And so I think it's good to turn them, probably good to turn them off in general. Um, they're mostly useful for like, you know, when you're doing the analysis and building the dashboard, not necessarily for the end user of the published dashboard. Also made sure that the titles for the filters indicate which action to take, you know, select this, select that. And then made sure that the instructions refer to those filters by their specific names. So, you know, not, didn't describe them colloquially in the, in the instructions, use the specific names. Um, have a legend title that indicates its function. 
and then I use shape marks in the viz. So instead of using color to indicate the different kinds of events, I use shapes. So that gets over the uh, using, needing to use color uh, in order to tell things apart. And then finally, set the focus order correctly. And that's what I came up with, and now, We are gonna switch computers. Okay, so this is, this is the dashboard. Uh, it's running in my Tableau online account. So this is Tableau 2019.4, which came out like, what, two weeks ago? Uh, this is live code and everything. And I've got it up here, and I'm gonna turn on the screen reader. Voice over on Safari, accessible dashboard, TCMT so, presentation, ICT daily planning tool, Tableau online, window, I've got it link, fairly explore, fast. This is actually very We're typical. Link to um, and sometimes even control, faster. Space is how people use this. It's amazing. I've, I've gotten to watch in some usability studies, people try to use Tableau dashboards with it, um, you know, actual blind people who use screen readers every day. And I'm like, how do you understand that at all? But then after you listen to it for a while, it actually, it's surprising how easy it can become to understand the quick text. So up here, um, so you, you're gonna see, right now my key focus is in the top left um, on one of the links. So that's all the stuff that we made accessible in Tableau 2019.4. So that was new here. So I can tab around visit, visit, to link, all these accessible links. Yeah, click to toggle favorite toggle button. You know, I can favor the toggle button inside to. of web content to select a view device view opens help, help icon pop up. And this is you are currently like on the This is actually pretty content. typical. To display a list of options, do press control option space to exit some area. Press control option shift up arrow. Okay. Notifications icon <laughs> collapsed. KG button refresh button. So you then I get into the toolbar. View, original alert subscribe button edit button. If I want to download button comments collect comments open up close comments button data visualization frame. Commissioner one, filter select the CCG inclusive, all, filter all, filter select your ICT inclusive, all, all, filter select the practice inclusive, visited link image, keyboard access for embedded Tableau views, finder, desktop, desktop, Safari, accessible dashboard, TC19 presentation, ICT daily planning tool, Tableau online, window, refresh button. Okay. You are currently on leading toolbar. All right. So now I get into my keyboard access for embedded Tableau views, web application. Actually, the dashboard. link, press control, option, space. So. Refresh button. You are currently leading toolbar. Visited web content, keyboard access. So this is the web page I mentioned that explains the documentation that explains how to do the um, keyboard access for the views. Close all windows, visit link image, keyboard access for embedded Tableau views, web application. So you are currently on a link to click this link, press want. control, Southern Health NHS Foundation Trust logo image. You so are currently on an image. The ICT daily planning tool dashboard uses two timelines to show historical health service events for patients admitted to hospital in both the last hours and in the three days prior to the last day. They also use the select the CCG, select your ICT, and select the practice controls to filter when either of the events for patients admitted in the last day or yep. the events for patients admitted in the three days prior. Commissioner one, filter select the CCG inclusive. Commissioner one, tap. Commissioner, 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 commissioner three. Commissioner one, filter select the CCG all. Filter select search all. T team ten text to all. Filter select your right all. Filter select search all. G GP practice fifty two. Check checkbox three. G GP pra uncheck. GP practice forty three. Check leaving the apply button. GP practice forty three. GP practice forty three. Multiple values. Right. Filter select the practice inclusive. Number of patients admitted. Number of pa events for patients admitted in the three days prior to the last day. Okay. <laughs> patients admitted in the three days prior to the last day. Now we're on a visualization. Now we're on a Reading the title, it's reading the caption. To open the view data window, press control shift enter. You are currently on an image. Now I can open up the view data window if I want. Data. And I can see the data in a tabular format. This area. Press control, option, shift, up arrow. And one thing that happens when you have a screen reader on, it brings up, it, you get a whole bunch of new keyboard commands. And one of the sets of keyboard commands you get are keyboards, uh, commands to navigate in the tables. So, so I can heading level one bold twenty point per donna black summary table eight columns nine. So now we're in the table two ninety two current service line admission hospital four column two of eight. So row three of ninety two admission navigate hospital four and read all four of ninety two admission hospital four um, for the row three of ninety two admission hospital four. You are currently on the text element inside of a cell. Close all windows. Events for patients admitted in the three days prior to the last day. Image web application. Number of patients admitted. Number of multiple values. Filter select the practice inclusive. Menu pop up combo. Team 10. Filter all. Clickable. Web app. Team 10. Text. All. Click. Team 10. Filter select your ICT. Include Commissioner 3. Filter select the CCG. Include Commissioner. Commissioner 2. Text. 2 of 4. Commissioner 3. All. Filter select multiple values. Search. Enter. Edit. All. Check. All. Checkbox. Cancel button. Apply. All. Check. Checkbox. All. Check. Checkbox. All. Filter select the practice inclusive. Menu pop up combo. Web application. You use a Tableau dashboard. You are currently on a menu pop up combo. Type text. Use this list of choices. Press control. Option. Space. Like I said, we've, we've done some usability studies, uh, which are actually pretty, pretty interesting to watch. Um, you know, the studies were basically, we had a dashboard, test dashboard, and had a series of questions that we wanted the individual to be able to answer using the dashboard. And, you know, I'm not gonna say it's easy for someone to, I mean, it's just anytime you're learning to use a website with a screen reader and such, and you have trouble seeing it, it's challenging. Um, people get really good at it though. Uh, and I was actually surprised to see how easily 
the people I've seen do this were able to do so. I wouldn't say it was easy, but it was, you know, I, I could have done it, but I also don't deal with that. Um, and so they were able to answer questions using a screen reader and using the keyboard and actually, you know, get the values to the data that they needed that we were asking them about. And so that was, that was pretty neat. Okay, so we are about wrapped up. Yes, 20 seconds left, so just in the nick of time. Um, <laughs> So uh, resources, like I said, there's a frequently asked questions document. Everybody, by the way, is going to get these, all the slides and the recordings of the presentations will be available on the TC19 website after the conference. Um, these are all live links. Uh, or if you just go to our community forums and search accessibility FAQ, that's going to be there. See a bunch of posts by me, ask questions, um, and hopefully we can extend uh, the people who are out there doing this kind of work, because I think it's really important. So thank you. Uh, I went to the very end, so I don't have time to take questions, but come on up and ask any questions uh, if you have them. And thanks, and I hope you had a good conference.